start off by saying two words, and I'm going to see what response is coming back here. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Did you hear Charlene Larson in the front up here? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, this is in the spirit of the regatta story. Uh, this is the Columbia River Symphony's versions of the regatta pop. So you guys excited? Yes. One more time. Are you excited? Yeah. And nervous. <laughs> I was back there uh, talking back in the green room and mentioning, you know, we're excited, but at the same time, the anxiety, the nerves, we've been working on this for about 11 or 12 weeks. And we had a rehearsal here last night for about three hours. And then we've been here also uh, prior, we had a parade, some of us were out playing in the parade. And yeah, we're excited. And now all of a sudden it's concert time, the lights dim, musicians are in front of you, they're excited, they're ready to go, and guess what? We're going to give them a darn good show, all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tonight's concert is not a traditional concert for us. In, in the uh, program, you're going to notice some titles such as Star Trek Into Darkness, <laughs> uh, Jurassic World, Pavan for a Dead, Apatosaurus. Not what you're going to think for Jurassic World or Jurassic Park. It's not at all what you're going to be thinking. Um, let's see, Pirates of the Caribbean. We're going to finish with Pirates of the Caribbean. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about some of these titles here. And I want you to displace your thoughts of what they sound, not what they sound like, but what they're associated with. Because today we're going to do something a little bit different here. On the screen, you can see right here, this very first uh, version here, uh, we have some artwork illustrations. And this is Tyler Livingston, a teenage boy who's a... Uh, I've been watching boats in the Columbia River for years as he's been growing up and he wanted to enter into a regatta race. And through this aspect, you're going to hear a whole story about this young gentleman getting involved into an Astoria regatta style boat race throughout here. The music in your program will accompany the story. So when you think about Star Trek in a darkness, there will be no spaceships, there will be no Klingons, uh, and more. None of those things will be in there. Um, the story is being read by a young gentleman, Corbin Darrington. Uh, excuse, Cor excuse me, Corbin Darrington. Is Corbin in here today, by the way? Is he, is he in here? Could you, could you come up front? Could you give him an encouraging round of applause? Come up front?
summer day, posters appeared all over town, announcing the annual regatta boat race. Excitement buzzed through Astoria as seasoned sailors and enthusiastic newcomers prepared for the challenging race along the Columbia River. I was now 14 years old and decided this was my chance to prove myself. With determination sparkling in my eyes, I convinced my father to let me enter the regatta race. My father, though concerned about my safety, could see the fire burning in my heart and reluctantly agreed. We worked tirelessly in the weeks leading up to the race, fine-tuning an old but sturdy sailboat that I had grown fond of. Throughout the building process, my father shared stories of his own experiences with the boats and regatta events, passing down his knowledge and wisdom gained from years on the water. We laughed over mistakes, celebrated the small victories of building the boat together, and appreciated the persistence and patience required for craftsmanship. Upon completion of the boat, we took to the waters for trials. We tested stability, speed, and maneuverability, making any adjustments necessary to ensure that it performs optimally for the race. I felt the surge of excitement and pride as I saw our hard work pay off on the water.
families lined the riverbanks, cheering as boats of all sizes and shapes gathered at the starting line. My heart bounded with a mix of nerves and excitement as I maneuvered our boat into position. Voices of the race officials and announcers could be heard over the loudspeakers providing last minute instructions and counting down to start the race. Three, two, one. The sound of the starting horn echoed across the water, signaling the beginning of the race. I was immediately engrossed within this dynamic environment. Every sensory stimuli engaged, visual, auditory, and emotional. All that heightened the thrill and intensity of competitive sailing. I had an immediate flashback of memories engaged.
choppy waters with skill, my determination pushing me forward. I quickly realized, however, that racing against seasoned sailors was no easy feat. As the race progressed, I encountered whirlpools and treacherous currents that tested my resolve. At times, I felt overwhelmed by the sheer power of the river. Amid the challenges, I found moments of pure exhilaration. The wind in my sails, the spray of water against my face, and the camaraderie among fellow sailors fueled my spirit. I forged ahead, pushing past doubts and fatigue, driven by the dream of crossing the finish line.
like the whoops. I heard somebody out there whooping. All right. <laughs> okay, at this moment, we are going to take a, a brief intermission, about 10 minutes or so. And out there, I believe, help me with the name again for the quilt. Evelyn Allen. Evelyn Allen. Uh, if, you, if you've been out there and you've seen this beautiful quilt out there, uh, it is the softest thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, we're doing raffles back to for that quilt. One of you guys will walk away out of this room with the quilt. I believe it's $1 a ticket, or you can get six tickets for $5 back there. So uh, we're going to be back briefly in about a 10-minute mission. As I said before, we appreciate it, guys. Uh, we'll be back with the second half. Thank you. Some interesting things happen as you're on stage. As I'm walking by my first violin, you may not hear me, but I'm walking by going, don't push me, don't push me. <laughs> we have some heated moments sometimes in rehearsals, am I right, sometimes? Um, but not too heated, we have, a, we have a blast here. All right, for the raffle for uh, Don Anderson up there, who's doing the entire slideshow, the delivery crew, to everyone running the whole shebang all the way around, can I hear a big round of applause for you?
Panic surged through me as I struggled to right the vessel. Exhausted and disheartened, I watched helplessly as other boats sailed past me.
to give up, I remembered my father's words. A sailor's strength lies not just in skill, but in resilience. Drawing on every ounce of determination, I managed to flip the boat upright, and with the sheer inner strength brought forth from within, I was able to resume the race, albeit now far behind the leaders, but refusing to give up. I was a young man at the helm of the boat, and was a picture of raw determination and youthful resolve. My face, a mask of focused intensity. My boat lagged behind the leaders, a good distance separating me from the front of the pack. The sails, though trimmed tightly, flapped impatiently in the erratic breeze, and the hull cut through the water with a steady, rhythmic thud. Sweat dripped from my brow, mingling with the salt of the sea as I fought to maintain my face. Despite the exhaustion that clung to my limbs like a heavy shroud, I kept my gaze fixed on the distant leaders, their boats small but visible, skimming effortlessly over the waves. My heart pounded, not just from the physical strain, but from the weight of unspoken doubts that gnawed at me. I took a deep breath, drawing in the crisp, salty air, and let it out slowly, trying to clear my mind. My thoughts, though fragmented, were a steady chorus of encouragement. Keep going, just one more tack. You've trained for this, every stroke counts. With each pull of the oar, I willed myself to push harder to keep the rhythm steady. My muscles screamed in protest, but I pressed on. The determination in my eyes, a silent battle cry against the creeping weariness. The boat responded with a slightly more urgent glide, cutting through the water with renewed purpose. My mind raced with memories of grueling training sessions with my father, early mornings, and the relentless pursuit of improvement. I remembered the times I almost gave up, but also the moments I found strength and perseverance. Remember why you're here, I thought, gripping the tiller when with renewed resolve. This is your moment to prove you can endure.
As I navigated the course, the distance between me and the leaders seemed to fluctuate, but I refused to be disheartened. Every minor adjustment I made, every slight change in technique, was a step toward closing the gap. I focused on the immediate challenges, the way the boat responded to my commands, the shifting patterns of the wind, and the subtle cues of the water's movement. The sky slowly cleared and the sunlight grew warmer, casting a golden glow over the scene. With each passing minute, my confidence grew, and I found a rhythm that seemed to sync with the natural cadence of the race. The boat surged forward, cutting through the water with a growing grace and speed. My breathing was heavy but steady, each breath a testament to my resilience. As I glanced at the leaders once more, and knowing that the finish line was drawing near, they appeared a bit closer, a tangible reminder of my progress. I allowed myself a brief smile, feeling a surge of adrenaline and hope. Through grit and determination, I continued to push myself, each stroke a declaration of my unwillingness to yield. The race was nearing an end, but I had rekindled a spark of possibility within myself, proving that even when trailing, the journey itself could forge new paths to triumph.
first was a scene of fading glory as the sun began its descent, casting a warm golden hue over the water. The last remnants of the day's race drifted lazily as boats docked and cheers from the crowd began to wane, leaving behind a tranquil silence interrupted only by the soft lapping of the water against the docks. My boat, though now trailing well behind the leader, glided slowly toward the finish line. My face was smeared with salt and sweat, but the exhaustion and strain were overshadowed by a look of profound contentment. The sails, once flapping furiously, were now relaxed, a sign of the race's end and the completion of a grueling journey. As I approached the dock, my father stood waiting at the edge, his presence a steady beacon of encouragement and pride. My father's face was illuminated by the soft glow of the setting sun, his eyes glistening with a mixture of emotion and admiration. I saw him and felt a wave of warmth and gratitude wash over me. The boat nudged against the dock, and I stepped onto solid ground, my legs feeling unsteady but my heart light. I looked at the medal I had earned, not one of the top prizes, but a testament to my perseverance. It was modest, but it symbolized so much more than victory. My father immediately reached out, pulling me into a tight embrace. I felt a surge of emotion that made my throat tighten. You did it, my father said, his voice choked with pride. You finished, and that's what matters most. I nodded, my eyes bright with unshed tears. It was tough. I didn't think I could make it. My father smiled, his hand resting on my shoulder. I saw how hard you fought. I saw you push through every challenge. That's what makes me proud. Not the place you finished, but the heart you showed. I looked out at the water, where the reflections of the setting sun danced on the surface, a mirror of my own journey. The memory of the stormy moments, the endless miles of struggle, and the unwavering support of my father all coalesced into a profound sense of achievement. I had faced countless obstacles and doubts, but I had persevered, and that was a victory in itself.
my father and I stood together, our bond strengthened by the shared experience. I could feel the weight of the day's challenges lifting, replaced by a new solid sense of self-worth. I had learned that the true measure of success was not in the medals or accolades, but in the strength to continue and the support of those who believed in you. I realized that life, like a river, was full of challenges and unexpected turns. The key lay not in avoiding difficulties, but in embracing them with courage and resilience. As we walked away from the dock, the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of deep orange and purple. My steps were lighter, my heart fuller, and my spirit unyielding. I knew that this race, despite its outcome, had been a monumental step in my growth, a testament to resilience and the unbreakable support of my father. The regatta had taught me that success wasn't just about winning, it was about overcoming adversity and staying true to oneself. With a grateful smile, I knew that no matter where my love for boats took me, I would always carry the spirit of the river in my heart, a spirit of strength, determination, and unwavering hope.
Okay, at this point, before we head out, we're going to do the raffle ticket really quick. Before we do so, can we get one more round of applause for Corbin Darrington, the narrator of the story? Thank you.